so I've opened Photoshop up. This week, you've already gone through the process of editing. You've done all of that already. Now I need to create a new image so I can label my aperture pictures to turn them in. I'm gonna go ahead and hit Create New. And this time, instead of just uh, giving myself a generic file size, I want to make it, um, if I have two horizontal pictures, I want to have it 12 inches wide and four inches tall. It's gonna be a horizontal picture. I can change that through this orientation size here. Um, my pixels, because I'm not printing it, it does not need to be 300 pixels per inch. I'm gonna go ahead and keep it on the high side at 150. Um, 72 would be the lowest I would recommend going for this. Um, so now I have it all set up. If you are doing this vertically, you would just flip the dimensions to this vertical orientation and it would flip them around. Uh, my pictures are horizontal though, so that's why I'm sticking with this. All I have to do is hit create, and now I have this rectangle to put my pictures onto. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit file, open. I haven't gotten my pictures open yet, and it is gonna go ahead and bring it to aperture. I'm gonna hit shift to open both of these at the same time. And you'll notice, this is one thing that's a little confusing, it doesn't open my pictures on my original file. My original file is still blank, doesn't have any actual images. So one thing I can do is I can move them. Before I do that, before I move my images, um, say I don't remember what my aperture setting was um, for this particular image. Um, I can go under file, file info all the way kind of almost to the bottom of the page and it pops up with this menu and it should tell me under camera data what it was fired under so if i look under right here my f-stop was 11. so i'm gonna write that down for myself so i i have that exact number i had f-stop 11. i'm gonna hit okay and I'm just gonna really quickly do that for the other file as well. You can see these are not beautiful images. They are uh, meant to demonstrate this purpose. You can uh, really see everything on my face there, but that's okay. So file, file info. Um, and I can see here again, now I'm at an f-stop 5.6, which makes sense. If I look at the background, that lower number, the 5.6 should be blurrier in the background and it is. So we'll look at those again. And this is my f-stop 11. Again, the bigger the number, the smaller the opening, and the more kind of information I get in that background. It's a little bit different than what we would naturally think. So now I have that information. I'll go ahead, I'll start with the smaller one on the left. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag this out so that I have it floating around over here. I'm gonna go back to this original file and you can see I have this right at the bottom. Um, it's in a separate window and you can see if I look under layers, there's a thumbnail that is of my face. <laughs> I wanna drag and drop this onto my white canvas. So it does take a little bit of getting used to. All I'm doing is I'm taking this thumbnail, I'm literally going to drag and drop it. And you can see, oh my goodness, the original size of the picture is much larger. Um, than the canvas I've given myself. Easy to fix. All I have to go under is edit, transform, scale, and you see this blue rectangle, I'm zooming out, that starts to uh, show up. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag it down until it fits in that boundaries. Um, and one thing I want to make sure that I'm doing, we're getting smaller so I can zoom in a little bit, is I want to pay attention to the proportions of things. Um, they have changed it so I don't have to worry about things getting quite as distorted anymore. Um, I used to be able to hit the shift key to keep my proportions, but they have changed that feature. Um, and actually that is what has happened. There we go. This takes me a minute, but I'm just dragging it and dropping it right onto that frame. All right, 
first one in. I'm gonna do the exact same thing on my second one. So you can see I'm pulling this out of the tab. I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna select my original file size. Now I have to find my other image, which can be difficult to do if I have a lot of windows open. Bear with me. You can see If something like this happens, there's a couple ways to go about it. What I do to quick fix it is I drop it back in the original window, I pull it out again, and now I have my face compared to that background. So I can just put this on my new file. Again, it's at a big, much, much, much bigger image size. So I just have to go to Edit, Transform, Scale, and I'm just going to pull that down Again, I don't need to hit shift. That's an old habit. They've changed that um, particular version. And I'm just lining this up with my other image. And you can see that it doesn't fit exactly, which is not a big deal. I'm actually just gonna fill the whole space up. You can see that I have a little bit of that picture kind of overlapping. I'm gonna hit enter. Um, and now I have my two images. Oh, just so beautiful something you want to see every day. The last steps, and I have two images. And remember, you're doing this twice. You're doing this for two sets of images. Now I have to label them. And I have to remember which one is which, right? So my one with the blurry background, that is going to be my lower number, which in this case, my f-stop was 5.6. On the left, there is an icon, and let's expand this again. There is an icon that has a T on it. That's my text. I'm going to do the horizontal type tool and you will see um, at the top menu, it lets me choose what font I want to do. There's this drop down menu so you can um, <laughs> don't do it in emojis because then I won't be able to read it. Uh, I'm not I'm not that advanced yet. Maybe one day, but I can scroll down and I can choose what font I want to use. It's up to you um, again. I choose something fairly neutral. I'm actually, I'm just gonna leave it. Um, let's choose this one, why not? You can change the um, boldness depending on the font there. I can change the size, I'll leave it at 24. I can change the alignment over here and the color. I do not want an orange font. Um, I just think it's gonna blend into the background too much. I'm gonna go ahead and try with like a dark font so you can see this little circle is just letting me adjust the color. I'm hitting OK. And now I'm going to start typing. And its default is to tell me lorem ipsum, which of course it does. Um, but if I want to do this one, all I have to do is f-stop 5.6. I'm actually going to make the font bigger. I feel like that's a little small. And now I have that labeled. Great. Now I'm going to come over here. You can see it's lined up with the other one because these three pink guidelines appear. Um, all that means is the very top is aligned with the top, the very bottom is aligned with the bottom, and the very middle is aligned with the middle. So I'm going to type in my f-stop for this was 11. And I can just hit that check. And now, perfect, I have that done. If I decide that I want to move these, I can just pick them up and move them. So maybe I align them a little bit more in that corner. Um, there you go. Labeled with text. Now it's ready to submit. It's ready to upload. Again, you can see on the uh, menu here, I have four different layers. So if you want to come back and be able to change things, this is when you would save it as a Photoshop file. So I would hit File. Um, save as, you can even just save it, and I could say Aperture in Progress. And it would save as a Photoshop file. Again, these are really large. Um, if I am done, I'm ready to submit it, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flatten my file, flatten image. I'm gonna check on that image size because it might be pretty large, let's see. Um, nope, good, it retained my original information. And now all I have to go do is go file, save as. Instead of this being, um, it's an aperture final. So I'm gonna change my file name. 
And instead of it being a Photoshop file, I'm gonna change it to a JPEG to upload. I'm gonna hit save. I'm gonna keep that file quality large because look, it's under a megabyte because of those original dimensions I set. Hit okay, and then now I'm ready to upload this. So you'll do this process twice. This is the first round where I have two different, same subject, two different aperture settings. And you're gonna do that again with a second subject.